Hello and welcome back to this series on Named Entity Recognition or NER for the purposes of DH or the Digital Humanities. In the last video, we were able to create some custom functions that were rules-based so in spacey so that we could create and train an entity ruler. Now, while I use the word train, we didn't actually train a machine learning model. Instead, what we did is we came up with a set of rules to extract persons from Harry Potter. In this video, we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can take those rules to cultivate a really good training data set. And then in the next video, we're going to use that data set that we generate in this video to then train a custom spacey NER model. And that's going to be machine learning based so that we can then test it on unseen data. So let's go ahead and jump right in. This video is going to use a little bit of the same functions from the last video, but let's start by importing what we're going to need. We're going to need Spacey, we're going to need JSON, and we're going to be needing Random. Now these are what we're going to need for this video and the next video, so you won't have to copy and paste anything else in. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our last video's functions and we're going to just copy and paste in a couple of these. We're going to copy and paste in our load data, our save data, and we're going to copy and paste in our, where is it? Test model. Okay, and here we go. Now the purpose of this, uh, this series, uh, this video is to generate that training data. In order to generate it, we need to go and we need to copy and paste in also this little bit of code that we wrote outside of a function. I'm gonna copy and paste it down here. And we're going to be modifying this a little bit. So we don't need this IE underscore data. And we're going to be changing this up. We don't need this. And we don't need this. So all we need is just this bit where we broke down the text into individual chapters and then into individual cleaned segments. What we're going to do is we're going to move up and modify our test model function. We're still going to take a model and a text as our import, and we're still going to create that document object in Spacey that's going to be our original rules-based entity ruler Spacey model. And once again, we're going to iterate over all of the entities. However, this is where it's going to change within this for loop. We are going to simply modify it just a little bit. We are going to try and get an output that looks like what Spacey wants to see for training data. Spacey wants to see training data that looks like this, a list that consists of tuples, and inside this tuple will be a text followed by a dictionary whose uh, main, or whose first um, key is going to be entities, followed by a value that is another tuple that's going to be the start, oh, sorry, that's going to be a list that's going to be Within that list is going to be a series of tuples that'll have the start of an entity, the end of an entity, so the start character and end character, and those would be numerical integers, followed by the corresponding label. And while this looks like a very hierarchical and complex data structure to be, to just memorize, I promise you, once you do this a few times, you'll just get the hang of it and remember it fairly well. So what we want to do is we want to get our training or our data from this test model function into something that we can use as a training data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this results append function match this area right here, the start, end, and label. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty object outside of that for loop to store those entities. Make sure that you don't append to this results. So what we're going to say, we're going to make that into a tuple because you can only append a single object. So we're going to append a tuple that is going to have the int.start char, the int.end char, and the int.label. Now let's go through and see what this looks like when we call this function. So let's print this off. Let's make it a little object for right now. We're going to just call it something something. There we go. Why not that? We're going to make something equal to this. And then what I'm going to do is just print off this something so you can see what it looks like. So we're going to let this kind of this whole function just run as it did before. And uh, it helps if you actually end it correctly. There we go. And what it's going to do, it's going to iterate over everything. And this is what our output looks like. 
It's an entity, its start character, its end character, and its label. Now, we don't know the text, and that's not important. We do not need to have the text information here, so we don't need to know what specifically that person is. This will be enough to clarify it for the training process in Spacey. So what we need to do then is we need to create, take this, let me go back and adjust this back to entities.append, and what we need to do is we need to then create a simple conditional statement. If the length of entities is greater than zero, meaning an entity has been found. So if an entity has been found, then what we want to do is we want to say results is equal to, and again, we're gonna try to get it into this format here. We're going to say text, text, and we're going to say entities, and we're gonna make that equal to entities, our list of entities right here. So let's go ahead and print off results so we can see what this looks like with each case. So here we have our entity, our first entity right here, which is the text, uh, oh, I will, said Harry on down the list. And then we, uh, spoiler alert by the end of the sentence, by the way, hopefully everyone has read Harry Potter. We have our entities followed by a value that corresponds to that, which is a list that consists of tuples. Here we have two entities identified, one that starts at position 19 and ends at position 24, and that's a person, and one that begins at 189 and ends at 195. Now, I haven't gone through and checked, but the last one's going to be Dudley for sure, and I suspect the first one is Harry. There we are, position 18. So that's what this function is now going to do. We're going to get rid of that print, though, and we're going to return this. Now what we're going to say at this point, if results is not equal to none, meaning it's actually found something and returned it, if it's not, it'll this will result in a, uh, in a value of none. Make sure it's capitalized. So if something is there, then we want to create this training data. We're going to append results. And let's go up here and store this training data. It's going to be equal to an empty list. And now let's go ahead and run this. And then we're going to print training data zero. And we're going to run it. And we should have, oh, we've got an error. Oh, train data, train data dot append. Oh, there we go. Now we should have it. Okay, fantastic. This is our first sentence that has an entity, and it's going to be probably this, Mr. and Mrs. Dursley. If we go down, we have an entity, and sure enough, it starts on position 20, or at zero, and it ends on position number 20, and it is identified as a person. Because remember, in our first video, or second video in the series, we wanted to identify Mr. and Mrs. Dursley as a single entity here, because that's how they are being referenced, as a collective singular entity. So we have our training data, and all we have to do now is save that training data. So in order to do that, we can go up here to our save function that we have, which is going to take two arguments, the file that we want to save it to, and the data that we want to save. So we can simply say save, oops, lowercase, save data, and we're going to store this as, uh, let's store it as hp underscore, uh, oops, data, hp underscore training data.json and we're going to make that the train data and I should make a quick comment it's usually bad uh, practice in python to create objects with capital letters this is one of those exceptions this is the nomenclature uh, it's the way in which you create objects for training data you can make it lowercase if you want to but train data is almost always capitalized so this is considered a pythonic way to do it and we're going to just simply save all this training data and we've saved it, and we have it now stored as a JSON file outside of Python, so we don't have to create this training data again. Now, just out of curiosity, let's take a look at how large our training data is. So we're going to print off length train data, and let's run this. We have a training data set of 2,213. Now, remember, that's not 2,213 sentences, because each of these segments is a paragraph in Harry Potter. 
And that means that what we are looking at is a training set of probably closer to around six to 10,000 sentences. That's a pretty good training set that's going to allow us to train a custom NER model. And we're going to see in the next video how to do just that. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. And if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below.